A seven-year-old girl dies after her and her family cross the border illegally. A Chinese oil tycoon with connections to former Vice President Joe Biden has been arrested. Lastly, the UK police are trying to crack down on hate speech. This is A Better World, and I'm your host, Luis Acevedo. Today, I want to start off with the heart-wrenching story of a seven-year-old girl who died after being detained by Border Patrol agents. Her and her family decided to make the trek from Guatemala with 163 other migrants. Once they arrived at the New Mexico border, they decided to not go through a port of entry and go through the legal process of immigrating into America. Instead, they decided to enter the country illegally. Shortly after doing so, Border Patrol agents apprehended them. At that time, while in detention, the seven-year-old girl had seizures and a fever of 105 degrees. Once this occurred, they took her to a hospital by helicopter. Once they arrived at the hospital, the girl went into a cardiac arrest. They were able to revive her, but 24 hours later she died, lasting only 48 hours in America. The cause of death was exhaustion, dehydration, and shock. Now, the DHS Christian Nielsen had an interview with Fox and Friends where she acknowledged that the journey into America illegally is a dangerous one, which it is. This made it seem to the left-wing news organizations like NBC and the Daily Beast that she was a cruel human being and placing the blame on her family for crossing the border illegally rather than the Border Patrol agents. This, to me, is illogical by all accounts. The family is responsible for, her, for, their, for their children. They did not do everything they could to ensure they would have the subsidence to make it until they arrived at the U.S. border. Not only that, they still decided to enter illegally after making that trek. Why would you do that? Why would you not try to go through some type of process? That, that would be the correct way to go about it. And if, for one, you better prepared for the journey, your daughter would still be alive. It has nothing to do on behalf of the United States, and the Border Patrol agents, nothing. It has everything to do with the family neglecting their child. Anybody who says different is completely disregarding the facts of the matter. She died because she had not eaten or drank, in any, or drunk, or drank any water in seven days. That's what officials said. For several days, she did not drink any water or eat any food. Whose fault is that? She was only apprehended for 48 hours, and then she died. You don't die from starvation within 48 hours. You don't die from dehydration in 48 hours. You don't die from exhaustion from 48 hours. No, no, that happened through the process of getting to America. That's what took place. We have to acknowledge that. If we don't, then we are doing a true disservice to the real story. We have to be truthful when we tell things like this. We can't try to twist it and manipulate it to try and fit agendas. That is wrong and irresponsible on the outlets who are trying to do just that. I know it is extremely sad. I understand and I empathize with the family that they were probably in a horrible situation and just trying to create a better life in America because where else would you go if you're looking for a better life? This is the best place to be. There's no denying that. It is just so sad and heartbreaking that a family wouldn't take the proper measures to ensure the safety of their own child. That is irresponsible on all accounts. It, it truly is. And to deny that is to deny reality. In other news, a Chinese oil tycoon who has ties with Joe Biden, has been arrested. He is in an unknown Chinese prison, and his lieutenant, Patrick Ho, is actually in New York right now being charged for several accounts of bribery and money laundering. 
He's actually already been charged with bribery back in 2017 in November. Now, I'll give you a little background on the Chinese oil tycoon, Yi Jimeng. He is the pinnacle of success, or was the pinnacle of success. In Fortune's 40 Under 40, he was ranked number two. He has he had a net worth of $44 billion. Now he's sitting in an unknown Chinese prison cell for corruption charges over in China, which are probably all fabricated, completely fictional, and just a way for them to take over the company, which they did. I have to, before I go into the story, just know the Chinese government has fully taken over the country, uh, taken over the company. So the Chinese government gave him a line of credit to go and do business in other countries and try and set the groundwork for political infrastructure and the infrastructure of third world countries as well. The ty uh, oil tycoon, Mr. Ying, ended up making connections within the Chinese intelligence community, also recruiting former military members to work for his China energy uh, conglomerate, which was his way of doing business across the world. Now, during the Obama administration, he started to cultivate ties in the political realm. By doing this, he started meeting with corporations in the oil industry and even trying to build relationships in the tech companies as well by going to Silicon Valley and the like. He also made donations to the Clinton Foundation of $100,000 when Republicans won back the White House in 2016. He began trying to cultivate relationships with Republicans, although he wanted to focus solely on his connection with then former Vice President Joe Biden. Now, it's important to note that his relationship wasn't really directly with Joe Biden. It was actually with his son, Hunter Biden. Now, I believe last year, or a couple, I'm sorry, a couple of years ago, Joe Biden, then Vice President, and his son, Hunter Biden, made a trip on Air Force Two to China. After that trip, they were given $1 billion to his son's company. And from there, a beautiful relationship has thrived. And there are even private meetings in which supposedly Mr. Ying had told Hunter Biden that he would want to invest in American infrastructure and energy. Now, remember what I said earlier. The goal of his corporation was to further enhance political infrastructure, actual infrastructure, and build up third world countries. Well, by him trying to invest in American infrastructure and energy is a clear strategical move on the Chinese government's behalf. I say that because there are so many officials and reporters who state it is almost indistinguishable on who is acting on behalf of the company, whether it be Mr. Ying or the Chinese government. At that time, it was indistinguishable. Now, we know it's the Chinese government. They have completely taken over the company. So, the son of a former vice president was going to potentially allow somebody who wants to destroy America and take over the world start providing us infrastructure and energy, making us dependent on China. That's not good. That would have gave them the upper hand and more leverage. So he, like I've stated, has charges of corruption over in China, and his lieutenant, Patrick Ho, is currently being charged with bribery and money laundering in New York. We'll see exactly what happens to Mr. Ying. We already know what's going to happen to Patrick Ho. And 
I have to add one more thing before I go on to our last topic. His Lieutenant Patrick Ho accidentally called Joe Biden's brother, James Biden, and asked him for help over allegations of bribery between Chad and Uganda and trying to see what they can do to evade oil sanctions in Iran. This was at the time when the Obama administration gave Iran $150 billion in winking sanctions. I'm not saying the Obama administration was knowingly willing and working with the Chinese government to further their stronghold in America and bring down our great country to bring us in second place so that way they can go into first place. I'm not saying that. All I'm suggesting is that it's a little suspicious, okay? This is why I love talking about China because I want to bring attention to it. They are actively trying to destroy the Western world. This is not a conspiracy theory. Okay, maybe in essence, in true definition, it is a conspiracy theory. There is just so much evidence to actually back this up. And there are documents from the Chinese government stating that is what they would want to do. How do I know this? Because they run off of Marxism, and Marxism, all, all it wants to do is crush the Western world. Because it doesn't like communism, I mean, it doesn't like capitalism. That's why. It doesn't like the freedom we have. It doesn't like individuality. It doesn't like religion. It wants to do away with religion. That's why there are a million Muslims in concentration camps over in China because they won't give up their religion. In order to be a communist, you need to devote yourself entirely to the state. You have to believe your president, dictator, despot, whatever you want to call them, is your God. It is very important we are aware of what China is doing because it is starting to precipitate into our culture and Western culture as a whole. Take the UK, for example, the other article I want to talk about. The United Kingdom's police are working with Cardiff University to track hate speech and preemptively end it before it even happens. And it looks like imprisoned citizens for saying things or checking their pattern of behavior to see if they will say anything negative. This is evil. This is evil. And this is all part of a Marxist plan to control your thought process in an, an attempt to create a utopia. That is all they are trying to do. There, are, there is no two ways around it. What they want to do is control the way you think, control the way you speak, control what you watch, control what you listen, and have no dissent from what is being told out by the government. They want you to blindly follow them. That's what's going on. They actually have a law, and they had this law since 1986, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see here. Uh, yep, 1986, and it's called Public Order Act. And what it does is the following. Threatening, abusive, or insulting words or behaviors that causes or is likely to cause another person harassment, alarm, or distress is illegal. It also has been revised over the years to include language that deemed that is deemed to incite racial and religious hatred, also to on um, hatred on grounds of sexual orientation and language that encourages terrorism. Yet, they are playing off the terrorists over in France for saying, what did he say, Alak Akbar, which is a common thing that the Muslims say before they commit a very heinous act like mass murders we see it in France that they don't want to offend those people they don't want to offend that religion we see that in another example where a school teacher has to pay a fine for telling the truth about Muhammad and his relationship with a six-year-old girl I, let me correct myself a marriage 
that he had with a six-year-old girl. He called him a pedophile, and he and she's in trouble for that. Muhammad, the one I'm referring to, is the prophet in the Muslim religion. And they're making it illegal for you to say anything that brings citizens distress. What exactly qualifies as a distressful message? It can vary, just like hate speech can vary. What may make you uncomfortable and bring you uh, discomfort or distress may not do the same to me. How do you do that? Well, I'll tell you how you do that. You control the way people think. You tell them what's offensive and what's not offensive. You tell them what's appropriate and what's not appropriate. And if somebody says anything that goes against what you told them is appropriate and not offensive, there you go. Then you have your message for distress. If they were to say anything that goes against it. It is a very scary thing we are seeing taking place over the Western world. It has a lot to do with China. It has a lot to do with extreme Muslims. It's, it's an amalgamation of both, really. So that's the news for today. I hope you all enjoyed it. And I hope you all have a wonderful Friday. And we will see you again on Monday. Peace.